Hi, everyone. Steve Adubato. Recently, along with my colleague, Mary Gamba, who is the co-host of our series Lessons in Leadership, we had a compelling, interesting conversation with Brendan Somerville, who is the co-founder and COO of a company called Oishi. They're involved in indoor vertical agriculture. Fascinating stuff. It's about agriculture, leadership, vertical uh, farming, if you will. So interesting. And I tell you what, I learned a lot, and I think you will too. Let's check out one-on-one, -on -one, or one-on-two in this case, with uh, Brendan Somerville. Hi, everyone. Steve Adubato with my colleague, Mary Gamba. We kick off the program with uh, Brendan Somerville, who is the co-founder and COO of Oishi. And Oishi, tell us where that name comes from, Brendan, and what it means. Oishi means delicious in Japanese, and it describes our amazing uh, strawberries and tomatoes. Now, describe the firm, because uh, I called you an agricultural agriculture entrepreneur. Is that a good description? I think it is. So Oishi is an indoor vertical farming company. We're based here in New Jersey. Uh, we grow strawberries, some of the best in the world, at consistent quantity, quality, and price, pesticide-free year-round, uh, using revolutionary indoor farming technologies. Brendan, let me ask you this. It's vertical farming. What is vertical farming? Sure. So for us, it's actually indoor vertical farming. So we grow indoors, which allows us to decouple from the outside climate. That enables us to grow 365 days a year. And vertical means inside of our farms, we're able to grow many levels. So unlike an outdoor farm that has just kind of one level on the ground, we're able to increase our yield through stacking levels indoors. So it's much more space efficient. So Brendan, your background as a Marine, how did you pivot? How did your interest go from being a Marine and doing that? Where did this interest in the, because you also, it wasn't just strawberries and tomatoes. Talk about the you know, how you went from point A, point B, and now to point C. But Mary, hold on, it wasn't just the Marines, not that there's just the Marines. He was an intelligence officer in the Marines. So go ahead. Well, yeah, th thanks for the question. You know, the thread that I think ties everything together is being mission-driven. Uh, for me, I have to have the why behind all of my work. And in the Marines, it was pretty clear, right? It's service to country and also service to fellow Marines. And agriculture technology, really the problems that we're solving are also bigger than ourselves. So our vision is we want to create a future with sustainable, climate-resilient agriculture. Um, so I needed to be able to have something that I'm deeply passionate about. For transition, a lot of people think the military and entrepreneurship are diametrically opposed. And in many facets, I think they are. But they intersect in very important ways at the center of the Venn diagram. Uh, I think it's you know working in a mission-driven organization, um, having to deliver uh, against all odds in certain circumstances. And in many cases, having much more responsibility at uh, a more junior kind of age than you would in the private sector in both uh, military and entrepreneurship. So for me, the transition wasn't too difficult. But, but your passion for the military and Marine Corps is, is clear. You communicate that clearly. But your passion for agriculture comes from where? Yeah. So, uh, you know, when I was actually in military intelligence, I started thinking deeply about cause of conflict and what are civilizations fighting over today, but also what are we going fight, to be fighting over in 100 years? And the deeper I dug, the more conviction I had that food security driven by a shifting climate could be a major conflict driver of the next century. So this was over a decade ago when that conversation around climate change and sustainability wasn't really at the forefront. At that time, uh, there wasn't very many people uh, delivering new technologies uh, for climate resilient agriculture. So I wanted to tackle a big problem, and uh, agriculture was one of the biggest I could find alongside uh, energy and water, of course. Good stuff. So you're Matt, telling us you're an underachiever then. <laughs> 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 so obviously, being a Marine, it's all about partnerships. It's all about teamwork. But really, your work and in co-founding Oishi and how you got here, talk about that connection between leadership and partnerships, because none of this happens in a vacuum or in a silo. Absolutely. Partnerships are everything. I think there's two principles that are critically important to a successful partnership. One, the foundation is trust, trust and integrity. Absolutely. Uh, this partnership, it's, it's, a, it's like your marriage, right? You spend more time with your, you know, your business co-founder uh, than you do your family. And your reputation, your financial future, everything you're building is very closely entwined. And the second is mission alignment, right? You have to be very clear about what you're trying to build. And all partners to be, need to be on the same page. So I'm lucky my co-founder, Hiroki, and I had very purposeful conversations early on. Were we looking to build a business that we would just you know, sell very quickly? Or were, were we trying to build something for the long term that could create a paradigm shift? Uh, and we both deeply trust each other to make the right decision for the business and, and not for ourselves.
And before we let you go, uh, appreciate your comments about trust and partnerships, uh, but also this, this, your experience in Uganda. What was that very quickly? Because I was struck by that in your background. I uh, started avocado and coffee companies working with smallholder farmers in Uganda. So this was kind of the opposite end of the spectrum from indoor vertical farming and that it was basically no technology. And really my transition to indoor farming was based on the view that uh, climate change was affecting our growing in these regions, uh, plant disease as well very quickly. And my view was, you know, if these smallholder, these smallholder farmers aren't going to have a success in the future unless we build climate resilient agriculture. Um, so I turned that over to my local business partner on the ground. I do believe that indoor farming, conventional farming, greenhouse farming, big farms and smallholder farmers, we're all here trying to do the same thing, which is grow uh, sustainable food uh, and, and deliver a profitability while also doing that. So I, I stay deeply connected to the entire agriculture ecosystem. Before I let you go, before we let you go, agricultural leadership any different from regular old leadership? I think the principles really tie together nicely across the board. For us, it's one leading by example, not asking anybody to do something you wouldn't do yourself as a leader. Second is building a culture of teamwork. We call it one team, one fight, just like we do in the military inside of Oishi. Uh, and the final is as a leader, being at the point of friction, identifying what are the challenges in your businesses, and that's where you need to be as a leader. So I think those principles uh, you know, stand in, in private and public sector. Great stuff. Hey, Brendan, I want to thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Mary. That's Brendan Somerville, co-founder uh, and CEO of Oishi. Good stuff. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 30 years in public broadcasting. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, PSEG Foundation, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the Russell Berry Foundation, the Adler Aphasia Center, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. Hey kids, PBS Kids and Delta Dental want you to have a healthy smile. So here are some tips for you to remember. Number one, eat plenty of crunchy fruits and vegetables. Number two, brush your teeth after eating sugary snacks or drinking sodas. And number three, drink lots of water to wash away food particles. When your teeth are happy, all of you is happy. From PBS Kids and Delta Dental, have a healthy smile.